Then we are moving to the last presentation for today. The topic is scaling up production of Microsoft microfilter coconut water with probiotic lactobacillus paracase subscreen paracase strain CRL431. This will be presented by Dr. Fabric Valian. Please, Dr. Fabric, floor is yours. You've been given co-host, Doctor, and you can unmute now uh, and take the screen. Thank you. Perfect. Uh, okay. Okay, do you see my screen? Yes, perfect. Okay, good morning. Uh, well, good morning because I am in Colombia. Um, <laughs> thank you very much for the organizers of this event. I'm uh, presenting uh, the uh, scaling up uh, of the production of microfiltered uh, coconut water with probiotic. And Lactobacillus paracasi is just the strain that we used for uh, the product. Um, first of all, um, well, for those who don't know, microfiltration is a, a, a thermal uh, process, uh, contrary to pasteurization, uh, uh, which use uh, heat to uh, uh, eliminate uh, microorganisms. Microfiltration is, uh, is done at low temperature. So it was very interesting to uh, use it for the uh, uh, stabilization of uh, coconut water. Uh, this process is quite well known. Uh, 30 years ago, more or less in the 90s, the FAO um, issued a patent uh, on the microfiltration, especially for uh, coconut water. But uh, till now, uh, we don't know uh, if there is uh, industries that use, that use this, um, this process. Uh, I'm not sure because um, we have some problem. It, <clears throat> the uh, challenge is not technical, as I say here. It's quite an easy step because coconut water it has uh, characteristics that uh, allows it to uh, be microfiltered quite, quite easily. It's low turbidity. Uh, it, we, th there is no uh, suspended solids that can block the pores of the membranes. And uh, it's possible to reach a very high uh, volumetric reduction factors, but in factor, but in other way, in other way to say it, it's we can obtain a very high yield. For instance, um, we can obtain about nine above ninety five percent of uh, my, of filtration. So it's it's quite high, and we have very high permission uh, permeation flows. It means the uh, the um, the flows that goes through the membrane about more than 200 liters per square meters. So it's, it's quite interesting from the technical point of view. But the problem is about the, uh, the quality of microfiltered water. Microfiltered water, uh, coconut water, is uh, also more, <laughs> very uh, low turbidity, it's like water. So uh, from this point of view, uh, there is a problem because we don't meet the requirement of the consumers who are used to uh, drink a cloudy uh, coconut water. It's like it's really microfiltered water. You, if you see it, you cannot see the difference between water and coconut water. So this is a problem. The second one, as I said, because it's a thermal uh, process, we don't uh, deactivate Enzymes and the enzymes present uh, in uh, coconut water are, for example, um, the polyphenol oxidase, PPO and peroxidase, POD, that are both enzymes that can, um, that can alter the uh, color of uh, the coconut water. Uh, for example, it can become pink uh, or, uh, and that's a problem also for uh, consumers. Uh, another uh, drawback is the high retention of apolar compounds. Uh, generally, uh, apolar compounds uh, and some aroma compounds are apolar. It means that they are retained by, by the membrane. So at the end, 
the aroma profile of the coconut, the microfiltered coconut water is not, is not uh, optimum. Uh, so the, the essential quality uh, is not, is really um, uh, not fitted for uh, the market. That's maybe the reason why microfiltration was not really applied at industrial level to uh, the microfiltration of, um, to the, the treatment of green coconut water. Besides, it's technically very, uh, very effective. So we ask us uh, how to improve the quality of microfiltered green uh, coconut water. And uh, we see the possibility to add probiotic to, uh, to this uh, medium. Uh, actually, the market for probiotic is increasing worldwide. As we see here, uh, globally, uh, most consumers know that uh, probiotic may improve the uh, immune system health and also the, uh, the uh, health of the uh, uh, digestive tract. And so uh, we, we see that the probiotic industry is more oriented to use probiotic in dairy products and uh, there is also uh, an increasing market for, uh, or for an interesting market for uh, uh, non-diary uh, products uh, where we can add probiotic. Uh, as uh, for example, there is more and more consumers intolerant to lactose, for example, or consumers that uh, don't want to increase their uh, cholesterol intake. So, uh, Seeing that, we uh, try to um, see if uh, the coconut water, microfiltered, uh, is a good medium for the growth of probiotics. Uh, so we um, first um, uh, see if, if this medium is, uh, is interesting. And as you can see in the table uh, above, uh, when you compare, for example, the same um, medium, I mean, with sucrose and yeast extract. Sucrose is for adding carbon, uh, a carbon source to the uh, probiotic, and uh, yeast extract is to add uh, a nitrogen source. And if you see, if you, for example, coconut water, and you compare it to water, you see that uh, the uh, uh, well, in this case, uh, the lactic uh, acid bacteria is not increasing when you have water. Uh, only water, but uh, if the, you had coconut water, you see that it's increasing, and uh, by one log, which is which is a most, uh, which is very interesting for uh, for you using it as an inoculum, for example. And so uh, the interest here is we uh, have microfiltered coconut water, which is sterile, as we uh, can microfiltrate it on a membrane with 0.2 micrometer pore diameter, which is the, uh, the cutoff that uh, will retain all microorganisms. So the coconut water that goes, through, that goes through the membrane is absolutely sterile. And um, we can use it as a medium uh, for the inoculation of the uh, lactic acid bacteria. A, well, we use a lactic acid bacteria strain paracasi, which is uh, commercially well known. And after 24 hours of fermentation at 37 degrees uh, and constant agitation, you see that we increase the uh, number of uh, lactic acid bacteria by uh, uh, tenfold or less because one log. And what we see is that the uh, microfiltered um, coconut water with probiotic is becoming cloudy, of course, because we have, uh, well, I don't, I'm not sure you can see it in the uh, photo uh, here, but uh, the at 5%, for example, we see it's, it's cloudy. So it's interesting because uh, we, uh, we have, uh, as I said before, it's not like water, but it's, some, it's somehow cloudy and it's very similar to the fresh coconut water. So it was interesting from the point of view of the consumer. 
But what is the main challenge when you use probiotic in a non-dairy product is uh, you have to keep the, um, the content of lactic acid bacteria very high during the storage of the product. And that's why uh, a lot of um, studies have failed to do that with other kind of fruit juice, for example, because the fruit juice is maybe more acid or there is some compounds that um, start to um, uh, decrease uh, the ability of the, uh, of the probiotic to, to, to keep, to, to, to stay at a high level in the, in the product. But what we see is it was quite easy to have, for example, uh, a very high content of colony forming units uh, in the uh, coconut water during at least one month. And that's interesting. And that's, as I said, it's not always uh, the case for uh, other uh, juices. So the coconut water is not only a good medium for the growth of the uh, probiotic, but it also it is also a, a good medium for uh, to to for the um, preservation or the uh, uh, to keep the the, the 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 count of the colony forming unit very high. And um, from the commercial point of view, uh, it is absolutely compulsory to have the right to say your product is is with probiotic. You have to have more than 10 to six uh, colony forming unit in your product when the consumer is buying it. So if you say that your shelf life of, pro of your product is 30 days, at the end of the 30 days, you have to prove that you have at least 10 to six colony forming unit in your product uh, in order to uh, put on your uh, uh, product that it is high in probiotic. So it, it was quite easy with coconut water. Let's see now the process flow sheet that we use uh, for, uh, for this. So the green coconut water is obtained at the plantation. Uh, the, the, I mean, the, uh, the shells are broken and the coconut water is obtained directly uh, near the plantation. They put the green water in, in basket and they have to, uh, to add a, immediately uh, 250 uh, ppm of uh, ascorbic acid to prevent uh, oxidation. And that's a problem, as you know, if you don't use uh, ascorbic acid immediately after broking the shell, your uh, filtered water will become pink, and that's uh, uh, inconvenient for the commercialization. And um, so the, uh, the baskets with um, coconut waters are uh, transferred to the uh, plant. They are microfiltered, uh, as I said. It's we will see later. The uh, equipment it is uh, on um, ceramic membranes, which is uh, quite easy to do on the pore diameter zero to micrometers in order to have a sterile uh, 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 coconut water. Then a part of this uh, coconut water microfiltered is used to prepare the inoculum, and the, the main part is uh, stored in an aseptic buffer tank uh, while the inoculum is, uh, is, um, is uh, prepared. And the inoculum is prepared, as I said before, with uh, microfiltered coconut water, with uh, dry probiotic lactobacillus, and 5% uh, sucrose and 0.05 yeast extracts. 24 hour, 35 degrees C, I said 37, um, but it's around that, uh, 150 uh, RPM constant agitation. And then the inoculum is um, again reintroduced in the aseptic tank uh, at a level we uh, found that it was uh, 3%. Uh, I mean, for example, here, if you have 100 uh, liters microfilters, you will take three liters uh, to make the inoculum. And after that, the three liters, you will reintroduce them into the aseptic tank. Uh, you have a, a mixing and then a cold aseptic filling to obtain a product, um, coconut water with probiotic. Let's see here just uh, the, uh, the scheme of the, uh, of the process. Um, I, want, I would like to insist that this, uh, uh, this process has been uh, set up in Costa Rica in a small uh, company, in a small uh, 
not even company, it's a small uh, producers association, and uh, they are handling it uh, very easily. Um, so it's uh, you have here. I don't know if you see my uh, uh, the, the the pointer, but uh, you have a feeding tank. You have a, 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 a positive displacement pump that will press the uh, or make pressure of, of the microfiltration closed loop, and then we have uh, another centrifugal pump which is uh, doing the uh, the, uh, the the transfer. Uh, uh, and uh, then the uh, micro, the uh, coconut uh, water is going through the membranes, and then it's uh, stored, as I said, in a sterile buffer tank. Of course, all this to uh, you have to previously sterilize the line with uh, vapor, with steam. Sorry, with steam, and um, some other. Uh, sometimes we use also. Uh, uh, parasitic acid, but it's something very easy to do. Um, and the, uh, the idea is the uh, sterile tank here as a vent filter to prevent contamination from uh, the air. And uh, here uh, I, we have the bioreactor with the inoculum is prepared. And uh, thanks to a peristaltic pump uh, through a hose is again um, put in the, in the sterile uh, buffer tank. So uh, at the end, uh, we have this kind of product, as we see here. This is what uh, the products uh, at the moment uh, that is uh, uh, currently sell, uh, sold in the um, supermarket in, in Costa Rica. It's uh, pipa, it means uh, young coconut water. And uh, well, in this case, is organic with probiotic. As you see in the bottle, the bottle uh, is quite cloudy, so people or consumers are seeing it like uh, interesting. Here uh, we have uh, the uh, survey of 100 consumers uh, that were aggregated into three clusters, um, as we usually do when uh, we deal with uh, sensual analysis. Uh, the first cluster, which is 41% which is 40, of consumers, this is the cluster that like very much the product. And we see that they like it. Of course, there is some um, a kind of evolution of the of the taste of the product during storage, and uh, they 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 still like it, uh, whatever the uh, time of storage is. Uh, we have a second group that uh, prefer the product uh, uh, at day, for example, uh, up to day twenty one, but after twenty wait uh, twenty eight days. Uh, they, of course, the, the, the taste is, is, is changing a little bit because the, the microorganism is still alive inside. So, uh, but uh, it's still good. We consider that above five people like it. And uh, we have a very small group, only 11% of consumers that don't like the product, but strangely, we don't understand why, they prefer it when it is um, stored a longer time when the uh, lactic acid, you know, lactic acid is, is a specific taste, is higher than uh, at the beginning. So what uh, the, the product was quite accepted. And um, of course, this is what I uh, show you here is just the, uh, the hedonic scale. Do you like the product like this? But when you explain to the people that additionally to the sexual quality, quality, you will have some functional quality for, for your health, uh, it's different. It, here, I present only the sensual quality. So the product was, uh, was an, uh, an exit, uh, was um, successful, sorry, in the, in the market in Costa Rica. And that's, uh, that's what I have for you now, if you have any question. Thank you, very Thank you Dr. Fabric, for the presentation. Actually, I will hand it to the Dr. Ramsey to conclude for the session. If there is any question, if any, uh... we we have uh, uh, Dr. Badawi Muhammad. We have a question from um, from Professor uh, Muhammad Norami. I will um, I will ask uh, Isam to to mute uh, to to mute herself to 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 ask the the, the question directed to. 
to Dr. Fabrice. It is very interesting uh, as a presentation. I have one question at the end. Uh, first of all, hi, Sam. Uh, uh, you, he should be able to unmute himself. What? Could you mute yourself, Dr. Muhammad? Uh, there, okay, there we go. Okay. You can ask the question directly to. to okay. Uh, Perfect. Thank you for thank you, Prof. Fabrice, for your inspiring presentation. Uh, I really admire your work. Maybe because we speak the same language. Okay. My my question is: uh, Is there any difference with the growth and enhance, enhancer compound in the coconut water due to the age of the coconut fruit itself? I mean. Uh, if the, the coconut is older than uh, than what we already have, is it better or we prefer the young coconut fruit? Oh, very interesting question. Because, of course, we are uh, at the moment looking for uh, uh, trying to add value to uh, mature coconut water, which is a, a big oh. challenge. And uh, yeah. we, we, I can't answer yet. But... Um, mm -hmm. Well, um, we think that uh, maybe we, we can have the same, uh, the same um, growth, but I can't answer yet sure, for, for sure. Uh, we are doing currently this uh, kind of analysis. All right. Thank you, Rob. But it's very interesting question because, of course, we, uh, the uh, mature coconut water is uh, uh, in a lot of countries just uh, dump away and we have to add value to this. Yes. It yes. could be uh, an, uh, an interesting issue, yeah. We, we have Thank another you. question. Thank you. Can you suggest best technique to control turbidity in sh uh, sugar and juice? In, sorry, in? In, in what kind of? Sugar cane. Sugar cane, yes. Juice. Oh, I'm sure that, uh, well, there, there is some uh, work on that. Uh, microfiltration is the uh, best way to reduce uh, turbidity. Uh, also centrifugation, but I think that uh, microfiltration is more uh, cost-effective, energy-effective, and uh, it's, a, it's a, a very good way to reduce uh, turbidity as you, in microfiltration, you remove totally suspended solids in the, in the liquid. Okay. Uh, another question is for me. Just I, I, I'm when well, well looking for all your presentation, you you say all time green water, coconut water. Why you you insist to to use green? Ah, okay, because it's a it's a six seven months uh, coconut. Here we we call it green. I don't know if. Uh, in mature, or I, I don't know if you can say, you see, we, we call it, it's like, maybe it's a, a translation from Spanish, but we- uh, No, 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 I, I agree because when you, we say green, that, green, that uh, we, we have not used any, 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 any more, uh, everything is green, understand me? Ah, yeah, the, the shell, the shell of the, the shell, coconut yes. is green. Yeah. Mm. And here in your case, it is, it is, is, it is the, the case or not? Ah, okay, okay. Uh -huh. the, I, I, I see that some, you know, um, in, in Central America, they like it, the coconut water, they like it from very green coconut water, in some place a little less green. That's why I, it's six, six, seven months coconut. Okay. Nice. It, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And any, any more question, please? Thank you again, Dr. Fabrice. Very, it is excellent presentation.